Believe it or not, there's a play, another play. We're in the arts and crafts before Dr. Julius Garvey comes on tonight. There's a play about her life, I believe. It's meant to be absolutely phenomenal, okay? And um, believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we have got the producer, I believe, um, behind the play, Sister Connie. Sister Connie Bell, are you with us, my queen? Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed, for having me. Thank you very much. No, thank, thank you, you, my queen. Where, where, where are you tuning in from? I, I'm in Jamaica. Oh, see, no, 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 I still like you. I don't like you no more, sister. Pure jealousy <laughs> now. What, what, what on the back side are you doing in Jamaica, man? We're in the cold in England. Okay, well, I'm doing lots of research. Um, so this program that you just mentioned, Pokemonio, we have been, we've put that program on. It's going to be happening at the end of um, January, the 31st to February the 5th. But alongside that program is a lot of archives, Mr. Mohammed, that um, the community needs to hear about, the community needs to know. Because the powerful thing about this play that Una Marson wrote, it is hailed as Jamaica's first and only national play stop yeah that. stop that say that one more time <laughs> say that one more time it is hailed as jamaica's national play it is it's a national play mm -hmm. and the reason they've said that is because what una was so brilliant at doing was bringing in that conversation between what african what it means to be african in the caribbean because what people need to understand is that at the turn of the century when emancipation had been put in place, what was being put upon um, people who were of African heritage was that they had a choice. They could either continue owning up or accepting their wonderful Africanness and being demonized then by the colonial powers that be, or they could take on this new contemporary um, disposition of being seen as the middle class or the new class and take on a new colonial identity where pretty much you deny your Jamaicanness, you deny your Africanness, and you take on a persona. Hence, we get into the problems of the Windrush, you see, Mr. Mr. Mohammed. Yes. So there's a whole lot of intersections with all of that. Hence why when those people came over on the Windrush, they could speak better than the English people here. Literally, <laughs> literally, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Exactly. So this play that we're bringing to the audiences, Mr. Muhammad, is happening at Theatre Peckham. And what it is doing is showing how a community which practices the ritual, the spiritual form called poko or pokomania, yeah. they were able to retain their African cultural identity not only then, which was at the turn of the emancipation period, but also yeah. right up until now, they're still practicing that. So presently, Mr. Mohammed, to answer your former question, I am there in the villages up there getting more material to come back and share with our African centered community in London. Oh, wow. So you're out there on a mission then. You're not just on the beach. No, no. <laughs> People, people are cussing me in the chat line saying I mustn't be jealous, but I just had images of you just, you know, you know, literally jerk, jerk, you know, you've got your jerk food around, you're on the beach, you've got people serving you, but you're, you're, you're actually working for your people. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working for people, I'm working for the people, and they need to know this story, Mr. Uh, Mohammed, because um, um, they, we're doing a workshop this Saturday, so alongside the play, there's a workshop, and it's called performing indigeneity. And now I use the term indigeneity, Mr. Mohammed, because people seem to think that when you say indigenous, you're only talking about, um, you know, the American Indians yes. or, you know, somewhere in us. But they need to understand that indigenous means when you formulate a framework and a structure and a cosmology for yourself and your people, yes. this is what our African people did, Mr. Mohammed, during the 1860s, post-emancipation um, period, they had to do that, Mr. Uh, Mohammed, because they had to create a language, they had to create a culture and hey. a ritual system 
so mm. that they could sustain themselves mm. and an identity. Mm. Now, the question now, Mr. Mohammed, is what happened to that story? Come Why on. is it that when you speak to Jamaicans or people from the Caribbean, now moving forward, decades later, they've never heard of Pocomania? Yes. And if they have heard of it, there is a negative connotation to the term. They go, oh, yes, my grandmother did tell me never to, to talk about that thing. No. no negative connotation. No. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. No. A lot of negative connotations um, for those who do remember. So what we're coming to do now is to debunk that, Mr. Mohammed, yes. and to bring to life a story showing how a community retained its Africanness, created resilience, yeah, and yes. saved their mental health. Now, it's important that people see this play because they need to understand that nothing's changed. Nothing's changed, yeah? yes. We have nothing's changed, Mr. Mohammed. So here it is, our ancestors have actually created a tool, a tool, Mr. Mohammed. And so we need to know about that tool. So we're going to decolonize that tool and bring it to London. In the, in the showcase of this um, workshop, one that's happening this Saturday, it's happening at the National Theatre, 2 p.m. Um, uh, please put the link in the in the chat, Mr. Mohammed, for yes. the workshop. The, the, te the team um, the team's got the links. They're putting the links as you're speaking. It's going to happen this Saturday, mm -hmm. and we have invited experts in the field from the Caribbean, who um, are experts in in the culture, and also at from the Jamaica Institute, who deal with archives, and also. Um, a lady called Dr. Sarah Dorbadizi from Ghana, who deals in, in traditional folklore and the importance of archiving our folklore. Because this, Mr. Mohammed, the, it's these little retentions that they've stolen from us through mm. the colonial experience. Yes. And as such, we are here in Britain, drifting along like a log in the water, mm. lost shells, mm. not attached to anything. Yeah? When we have all of that. We have all of that. So it's about making those reconnections, Mr. Mohammed. Sister, you know, this is the first time I've actually had a chance to hear you and speak to you. And sister, I'm falling in love with you, sister. I love the way, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not even laughing, sister. I, I love your articulation. I can see that you're very passionate about this. I can see that you've studied um, in great depth. Okay, sister, we need this. And, and you know, I first heard about Aruna when I was doing my research um, into the World War II um, uh, contribution um, that came from the Caribbean, yeah? And I was amazed by her articulation. I, it just blew my mind. Um, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to her, okay, brother, um, sister. And, and I'm glad that you're doing this because, again, that's one of our hidden gems that now have been missed out. And that's why I wanted you personally on this show because when I found out about her, I was so inspired, but I didn't do anything further other than, you know, I've got one little workshop on, on um, where she's in um, a part of it, but you've done something dedicated to make sure that we are not going to forget our sister Una. And I want to say on behalf of all of the community worldwide listening to you right now, sister, we thank you, we thank you, and we thank you, sister. Just, just before I bring you back in, my queen, just before we come back in, because Bob says we've got to support initiative.
So, brothers and sisters, you see it there, Hidden Truth backs it. Um, please, let's support our sister, sister's play. It's phenomenal. I've, you know, I've just done a little research on it before, um, you know, as we arrange this. And as soon as I got the email telling me about it, I got immediately excited. <laughs> I, I'm glad to see that Sister Stella. Sister Stella is one of our great artists in our community. Sister Stella, I see you on, on the platform, sister. Give a salute to you and my brother, Nat. Um, sister, are there any last words you'd like to say um, to the brothers that's listening to you? Because you, you've got us on the edge of our seats right now, sister. <laughs> what what, what, what are your last words? The, the last words will just be to the community to definitely to come out. If you can't make it to the workshop, which is going to teach you about more about the history and these things that your parents were denied being able to tell you, then definitely come to the play, which is happening the 31st of January to February the 5th at Theatre Peckham. So go to the Theatre Peckham box office, get your tickets early. Do not be disappointed. You must go early because we're only running for one week. Yeah, we only got enough to be able to run for one week. All these things go. If we were a right, a white organization, they would have, you would have gotten some holy per money to do, um, just to last long. But we just about were able to put together our own monies in addition to our, um, the arts funding that we um, raised to be able to put it on for a week and to rent Theatre Peckham for the week. After that, we're, we're gone. So we are imploring for the community, bring your family in and see this play, it's going to be pretty awesome. Sister, can I ask you a question? And it's, not, it's, yes. it's a question I'm gonna ask the community. Um, the theatre in which it's at, because I've got to check my diary because in the chat room, um, people are asking, Brother Andrew, can we do a Hidden Truth takeover? Because I'm actually thinking, sister, and I may get myself into trouble because I've got such a packed diary, to be honest with you. Um, I'm asking a question to the brothers on the platform. If we were to book that whole theatre out or just based on our own community here on Hidden Truth um, chant, um, platform, who would be interested? If Brother Andrew booked out the whole theatre for one of the nights, would you be interested in coming as a part of the Hidden Truth crew? Yeah? Um, to, 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 oh gosh, look at the chat room, sister. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh, Don't let me down, brothers oh, and sisters. If I oh, come wow. to the theatre and I want to book it all out because I want to show this sister we love her, hidden truth. We, and I'm telling you, Connie, we've got a history. Sister um, yes, Samira yes. will be breaking it down very soon. We don't play on this platform. We ain't just a talking platform. We really do support those who come out for our community. So when we're talking about takeover, we mean takeover. Um, sister, can I ask you a quick wow. question? I'm um, Connie. And also, I'll, yes. we'll, we'll organise this behind the scenes. How many seats are how many seats are available in the theatre? Um, uh, what's, what's the seating capacity? So, Theatre Peckham seat capacity is a hundred and I think it's a hundred and seventy. All right then. It's All a, right. Well, sister, um, a, I'm, 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 I'm looking. I'm looking. Everyone's saying, "Book it, brother Andrew. Book it." All right, sister. <laughs> I, I'm not joking. I, I need. I need to check my diary though. I need to check my diary because I've got quite a lot of things coming up. But sister, if God spares, if God spares my life and my diary is in uh, my diary allows it to happen, we will try and book out the whole theatres. But that's something that me and you will speak about offline, okay, sister? And um, give thanks. You'll have all of us because you can see the chat room. Everyone's falling in love with you, sister. I want you to know that. So tonight, when you finish the show with us. You do go on the beach, get a pina colada and some jerk, <laughs> jerk chicken and know, and know that you've done a good day's work. <laughs> You're making me laugh. I don't even know if I have the time for that, but yeah, I would love to. <laughs> All right, then, my queen. Listen, we thank you so much thank for your support. Thank you spirit. very much. And your thank brothers you. and sisters, if you're feeling now, Sister Connie Bell, the producer behind this play, Drop some fives in the chat room. She, don't, not for me. She <laughs> this is, if she's touched your spirit tonight, drop some fives in the chat room because this is what Hidden oh, Truth is all about. Oh, oh bless. <laughs> I need that energy because, yeah, it's been tough. <laughs> so thank don't you. Worry, sister. All that hard work you've done is not in vain. That's what we're going to tell you on, on our platform. <laughs> yeah, all that hard work you've done, we're not going to let it go to waste, sister. 
and the fives are still going on in the platform. Brothers and sisters, show some love. Um, we may be able to book out the whole theatre and we'll let you know by next week's show um, what, 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 what's it looking like. Sister, once again, we thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Yeah, and uh, pure love to you, my queen. Pure love to you. So we, you. we support the wives of Wilsden, a wife Wilsden, <laughs> if I get the name right. And we definitely, definitely support um, Pocomania, okay, brothers and sisters. That is That may be the next Hidden Truth trip for us to go and support in our hundreds. In our and there's lots of Hidden Truth in there. <laughs> We can, we can tell, sister. We can absolutely tell. So um, we, um, behind the scenes, sister, make sure that me and you touch base. And, yes, uh, sir. Uh, Providing on my diary, we will see what we can do. Brothers and sisters, we've got the main okay. keynote speaker today. Our sister is laying back in Jamaica. And our main keynote speaker is the son, the first legend of Jamaica, the first national hero the, um, the, the, the son of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. He is our keynote speaker tonight and um, hoping that everything goes right. Because, you know, when you're doing these international things, brothers and sisters, it is literally a prayer and a, um, a, and, and a whim at times. Uh, Brother Andrew, nothing to interrupt, but also the Mars also, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey's secretary. So I just wanted to let share that with you. No, no, no. Say that Una again. Marson was also not only Marcus Garvey, but Haley Selassie. So there's a Rastafarian. So that's why Jamaica calls her the national. So she was Marcus Garvey's secretary as well. Just thought to leave that with everybody. All right. <laughs> Sister, I did not know that. I, I, I fell in love with her anyway, but now I love her 10 times more now. I had no idea she was the secretary for the Honorable Marks Messiah Garvey and Haida Selassie. Come on, brothers and sisters. She was one of the secretaries. He also had his wives, of course, Amy Jacks and yes. all of that. But Una Marson stepped in as a secretary for Marcus Garvey because she was also the secretary for the League of Colored Nations, the, 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 the League of Colored People in yes. England, which was the first magazine, black magazine and newspaper by Harold Moody, who was a prominent black doctor. Oh, yes, Harold Moody. And yes. she was the, the editor and secretary for this magazine. And so when Marcus Garvey needed a new secretary, it was, she stepped in as a temporary secretary for Marcus Garvey. Sister, what, what we may do, because you, you've now got 